So hi everyone, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord and I'm so glad and so pleased that God is still the same yesterday, today and forever. And our topic today is a relationship crisis and I think this is a very, very good topic because in, the, in this crisis right now, a lot of people are going to rough seasons in terms of relationship or all of a sudden realizing my relationship is not as strong as I thought. And I really do believe there is always hope and power in the name of Jesus Christ because you're never alone in your relationship. Hey, in the beginning, we are so in love, right? And then we are engaged and one day we are married. And married people, we are so strong. That means even though in a crisis, we stick together. And some people, I saw this on, on Facebook, they have gone to a, a cruise and even though of the coronavirus, they have been very creative and came home with a very, very funny face. Uh, I love that picture. This is amazing. But after you're married, you're realizing after a while, we are so different, different, more different than we thought in the beginning, right? And it means in the beginning, we are so falling in love and everything goes so smooth. And all of a sudden, it can be that relationship falls out of balance or control and here's another very funny story I found actually on Instagram. very, very romantically right in the beginning, but all of a sudden it fell out of a control or balance and I had to laugh so hard when I saw that amazing story. Hey, this is very simple. Men and women, we are really different and I want to show you a very simple illustration how and why we are so different. I want to draw um, a brain of a man. This is like the brain of a man and that's a brain of a woman. And we are equal loved and, and from God Almighty, but we are still very, very different. Here is a man. When a reaction comes from the outside, we have to understand a man reacts according to some boxes. Man, we are thinking in boxes. For example, here we have a box of, call it soccer. Here is a box of work. Here is a box of food. And here is a box of sexuality, and here's maybe a box of a car. And here comes the revelation. But in the middle of every man, there is a special box. And that box, the name is neutral. Why? What I mean by neutral means you think nothing. Have you ever had this experience? You are in, in a chair and you're looking just somewhere and then your wife comes and says, honey, what, 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 what's going on? What do you think? And you say, nothing. And she asks you, what do you see? You say, nothing. And your wife says, that cannot be. You have to think something. You have to feel something. You say, no, honey, there is the nothing box. Here's a very simple uh, ex uh, illustration, actually. When a bee flies by by a man, he sees the bleep, bleep and thinks of boxes. Ah, B, sport, soccer? No. B, work? No. B, eat? No. B, sex? No. B, car? No. When everything is no, then the bee goes into the nothing box and the man sees the bee flies by and he thinks nothing because it's not in one box. This is how a man thinks and works. This explains you more than you think. For example, uh, I flew with my wife some month ago over Asia and I was looking out of the window and then after maybe half an hour, my wife was saying, what do you see? And I said, nothing. Then she said, what do you think? I said, nothing. 
And she said, come on, it cannot be. She came, she looked out of the window and said, honey, here are some trees, some houses, some people. They have a different language. They have a culture. They have some family. At least you see some trees. I said, no, I see nothing. And I think nothing. This is very important that you understand. Man, we are different and we think in terms of a box, boxes. And now comes the reaction of a wife, a woman, comes the reaction from the outside. And here is the difference about the man thinks in boxes and women, they think like this. Don't laugh, it's just how it is. That means everything is connected. Everything is associated. That means they see a bee flies by and a woman thinks, oh, That be right. I should buy some bread and I should go to the grocery store. Oh yeah, when I go to the grocery store, I should pay paper for my printer. And by the way, I promise to uh, that company, I will come pass by. And oh, by the way, I take my car to the grocery store and I have to change the summer into the winter wheel. And by the way, I have to fill the car with gasoline. And if I fill it gasoline, we should clean the car. And if I use the car, I should meet that person and my grandma and my mother and everything. As you see, it starts with a B, but everything is connected with everything. I don't judge those things, but there are so big differences between a man's brain and a woman's brain. Can you imagine if just men and women, we are not the same in a relationship? What about the same sex? Some people are more introverted and some people are extroverted. That means we have anyhow a big problem because we are not same, same, same. We are so different and God calls you and me to live a healthy, strong relationship with people. They are so different. And now my wife, Pastor Sandra, she will take, explain us to us how can we handle the differences in our relationships. Thanks, honey, for Thank doing this. Thank you so that. much. Leo. Welcome. Hey, when you see the difference between men and women, how is it possible that relationship work and how is it possible to avoid um, disappointments? Yeah, so I was walking last week for two hours and on my way back on a bench next to me were sitting four boys. They were younger than 20 and probably older than 15 years and I did not expect anything from them. I just walked by them and as I was on the same, uh, you know, opposite of one of these guys, he greeted me. He said, hi, oldie. I don't know how it's in English, but in German, as he spoke to me, it's quite rude to tell me something like that. But because I did not expect anything from these boys, I was not affected. I was not offended. I just laughed about uh, the way he greeted me and I walked by. But if Leo would have told me that word, hi oldie or hi old lady, then I would have been offended very much because the difference is from the boys to Leo, my expectations are much bigger what I expect from Leo, how he treats me than from these boys. And this is the point. Sometimes we have expectations and the reaction of the people are so different and that creates a disappointment. And sometimes we even don't know what we expect because um, we just have it inside of us, but we never spoke about our expectations. But we um, think and we, we expect that the, in relationship, the husband or the wife or the, you know, the friend knows our expectations and can read it and can act accordingly. And that's why we are so often disappointed. And, you know, for example, Mother's Day. The day in itself disappoints so many people today because you expect to be treated differently than your kids treated you. Or maybe you are just disappointed about the fact that you have no physical kids. And 
There are so many things in relationship that just affect us. But because it affects us, does not mean that these people or our friends or our husband or our wives are wrong. It affect, when it affects us, it concerns us. It has something to do with myself. And it's worth to have a closer look on what affects us because it has a chance to, that we can grow our personality inside. And it's always worth to talk with God what affects us because it concerns us. Pastor Susan, thank you so much for your amazing point about disappointments and those things. And I think that for the beginning, it's very important when you speak a bit more about how we can have a strong and healthy relationship with people. It's just understanding we are different. That's the point number one. If I realizing we are really different, it gives me also the real perspective that God has created everyone different in a very unique way. If you have a smartphone, please take your smartphone out. We want to ask you two questions with a Slido. And I love this a moment where we are interactive uh, with each other because it gives us always the opportunity just to be connected. And I be believe everyone has a different story or a different opinion or also different experiences in terms of relationship. So often we are disappointed because there's a longing, there is a hope, there's some expectations and often that person is not even in the position to fulfill all the expectation we have because sometimes it's very unrealistically. And, uh, but, but anyhow, that's why relationship is quite complex. Please just give us your answer about those questions and then we're going into the message. How can we have strong and vibrant relationships with people? It's very interesting we have different wishes for other people, what they should do in a conflict or what I wish they should do. And the very interesting thing is to uh, think about our lives right now because the Bible is very interesting. If you start reading the Bible, uh, you will find out that God will t talk with you, not about other people so much, more about me and about Jesus. And so I want to make an experiment with you. I want to go in the book of James. In the book of James, James, uh, he is talking about things and we want to do it like a dialogue. The great thing is, today I have James behind the camera. James, great that you're here. Are you very well today? Is everything good? Of course. Yeah, great. So what are your opinion about this conflict topic? Uh, Toby, what leads to the unending quarrels and conflicts among you? Are you serious? <laughs> what leads to the conflict? I can tell you what leads to the conflict. You don't know my boss. If you would know my boss, you would know why I'm the situation. Or oh, my mother. My mother is not your mother, you know. And my mm. mother is not so easy. So it's Do they not come from your hedonistic desires that wage war in your bodily members fighting for control over you? Hmm. You mean in my life? 
Okay, that's a totally different point of view. Thank you, James. So this is uh, what happens when I read the Bible. I read it and it starts re- talking to me and I find myself in this situation. So the question, what helps me in the conflict? Because I have only my point of view. And my point of view is clear. When I am in, in a conflict, for example, with my wife in the first years, I always said, the sentence I said, I, w- I wished there would have been a camera during our conflict because then you would see, Frauke, that I am right and you are right wrong so i'm i'm in my uh, in my perspective all the time so what helps me first thing is that uh, god can help me to change my perspective i want to tell you a story uh, it was a few years ago i was a teacher in school and there was a student and this student was really for me uh, like uh, a very very tough guy because i was very often upset with him because he didn't do what he should do and he was uh, uh, yeah he was really gets on my nerves so on uh, one day this student asked me uh, so mr Teichen, what is leukemia And I said, why do you ask? And I told him, told him what, is it, what it is. And I asked, why do you ask? He said, because my uh, brother is in hospital and my mother, she told me that she, uh, he has leukemia. I don't know what it is, but I think he will die. So this information changed my point of view. And because of this, I had love for this young guy. He didn't change his uh, attitude. He didn't change how he acts, but I had love. So I was changed. And this is a perspective, another point of view where God can only help me. And Frauke will tell us now how prayer could help us in this uh, uh, changing of our point of view. Frauke, what is the possibility in prayer? Thank you. Mm, thank you. So today we don't have a conflict, right? <laughs> so sometimes in conflicts we realize that it's uh, a good idea to just press like a pause button. You know this pause button when you're looking a video? And, uh, and it felt like that's a good possibility to stop and to a little bit calm down and oh, everything is not so crazy and think about things. And uh, as Toby said, one good idea is to pray. And I always find it very interesting to pray the Bible or to see how people pray in the Bible. For example, David. In, and so I picked out Psalm 5. You can follow while I'm reading and see how we can take different four steps actually uh, to a new perspective. The first step is let it all out. So that's in Psalm 5, verse 2 to 3. Um, Hear my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. You can just put everything before God and tell him, that's what, what I worry about and I'm angry about that and all the things. And uh, you can just use your, your own words or you can use the words in this Bible verses. Like, hear my cry for help. I lay my requests before you. And, uh, and now it's God's turn. And that really happens to me when I really like letting everything out to God, then I can calm down somehow. And this is even the the second uh, step to calm down. And uh, here, as we can read in this last verse, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. That's what I do. I just sit there and then I wait for <laughs> just a second to calm down. And uh, after that, the third step is that you can take the perspective of God. In uh, we just continue in Psalm 5. Uh, in, in verse 5 it says, The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. And then in verse 7, But I, by your great love, can come into your house in reverence. I bow down toward your holy temple. And this is the moment where you can look, where you can focus on God because the joy in God is my strength. That's what the Bible says. And and I always remember how Leo once uh, preached about that. Don't always tell God how big your problems are. 
tell the problems how big your God is. And that's the moment when I focus on how good and how great and how big God is, what he does. And that's really what gives me joy and what changes uh, my perspective. That means like this prayer helps me to, um, to, to give God control about everything. And now please help me fix this problem. And usually he does a lot of things, especially most of the time in my heart. Um, for example, I have a, like a, a similar um, story like Toby has with his uh, student at, at school with a politician in Germany. I'm very upset with because he makes decisions I don't like or I don't, um, yeah, I don't think so. And uh, I started praying for him and actually I only prayed three or four times for him. But Just this few prayers, um, yeah, the result is that my heart changed. I, 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 I start to see this politician with God's eyes. And, and so I have love for him. I have, uh, like, like, yeah, I can, I can imagine some things. So, um, yeah, some, maybe it has something to do with this Bible verse in Matthew 5. Uh, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who uh, persecute you so that means that uh, God can can change things and that's it. the last step the fourth is listening in Psalm 5 verse 8 God's, uh, uh, David says lead me Lord in your righteousness because of my enemies make your way straight before me And now we can really go into the perspective of God. And the good thing is that most of the time I stuck in my, uh, how is it says in English, subjective truth. In my, not objective truth, in my subjective truth. So I just see my, um, my emotions, my reality and... Uh, Here comes a great picture. I really brought you a picture from Claude Monet. Um, and uh, you see, it's just a picture with where you can see a little bit and you cannot really imagine what it is. But when we zoom out of the picture, we see a beautiful lake and we can see the, the, the landscape and the small village. It's beautiful. I always think it's Gadazi probably. And that how God changes my perspective and your perspective. He always wants to put things together. And most of the time when I come and I argue and tell him, oh, Toby is such an idiot or whatever, what I say, I'm sorry, I sometimes say things like that, then God never uh, like confirms me. He always tells me, okay, Frauke, but what? let's see, what is your point? What can you do? What can you change? And um, yeah, so that's just a small idea how we can go through this psalm. Maybe in the next conflict you uh, remember this idea and I hope you will try it out and you will realize and um, experience how good God is. And uh, so now let's go back to Zurich. Hey, thank you so much, Pastor Frauke and Pastor Tobias for sharing us your Uh, wisdom in terms of relationship. I think it's very important that we pray for our friends and our family and our spouses. And I'm not sure about you, but have you set a time or a day in your agenda that every week consistently you pray for your relationship? Because often when I hear that, say, oh, okay, that's a no-brainer. I know there's power when we pray together. There's this power when we ask Jesus Christ to come and help us. But Do you have set a time in your agenda, like weekly based, where you say, really in that day, in that hour, I pray for all the relationship that God has given us? Because we heard men and women, we are so different uh, in terms of thinking. Men, we think in terms of boxes. And women, we connecting everything with everything that has almost no end. And a perspective means really for me that I understand from the God's view that God has created us very individual and very in a unique way, but we are equal loved, but not equal gifted. That means the gifting of God is so different. And the third strategy, and I would love to close if that strategy is a very simple point, is take action first. I really do believe if you want to have a strong relationship, action steps are very, very crucial, and very, very important for a strong and healthy relationships. I want to close with a very, very simple illustration 
um, because it helps me to understand why you need two parties in a relationship that the relationship is healthy. It's not only one person, it's two parties actually. Some relationship, it's like you in this point, you are giving and the other person is also giving. That means both are in a very healthy attitude of I am blessed to be a blessing and I'm called to make you stronger and better. Means it's a give and a take situation. Sometimes in your life, you just give and the other partner is just in the modus of I take. And the take modus can happen because that person has been disappointed. Because there are a lot of expectations what you should do and what you should say and whatever. And also they say, no, I'm not, I'm not in the giving modus anymore. I have to given too long. It seems it's not like an equal party. It can be also like you in the modus of just say, I just take and the other person is just gives. And a really unhealthy relationship, I will not even say it, that's a relationship, is when both parties just saying, I just take on both sides, but there is no giving. That means that relationship has no big future. It's only a matter of days or hours or minutes, and that the whole situation is over. Now just think for a moment, are you in a really strong relationship of giving on both parties and both sides? Or is one person in the relationship is just a taker or the other person is a giver? And here's a very a simple illustration from London. There's a very unique bridge, actually, the bridge. And when you see this bridge, that the bridge is, is working and you can drive with the car from the one side to the other car or you're walking to the other side, means the two levels of the bridge has to be on center. If just one party is saying, oh, I'm not into the relationship anymore, you just can take it down, but that bridge won't work. And I often use this bridge as illustration for those people who say, how long should I fight for my marriage? I fight, my bridge is down. But the opposite, my man or my wife, she's not willing, she's not into, she is not in the position of taking down. I say, look, a bridge only works on both parties. If both are giving, both are blessed to be a blessing, you have an amazing future. The Bible gives us a very simple Bible verse in Revelation chapter 2 in verse 4. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first place. Sometimes we're losing our love because things are happened in the past and it hurts you so much then you say, oh, I'm not in the position anymore to give. And here is the relation, the revelation actually, how you can change every relationship into a healthy and strong and vibrant relationship with the help of God Almighty. Verse five, consider how far you have fallen. Repent on the things you did at the first place. Hey, just think for a moment, when you started the relationship, you were falling in love. You felt some butterflies in your belly. Your heart was beating super fast, right? And also you did almost everything. You climbed the Mount Everest. You swam over the ocean to New York. And all of a sudden, after some years, you say, oh, no, I'm not good in swimming. Or not, I'm not good in climbing. Or oh, it's maybe rainy, it's windy, it's cloudy, whatever. And all of a sudden, the, the killing factor is routine. If a relationship falls into routine, routine, routine pattern, that means there's no big future anymore. And I think the Bible is so clear that do the first love steps, like writing letters, to make a phone call, invite to a special dinner, go out at evening for an evening walk, do something romantically, what you did in the beginning. And this is a nugget from God Almighty. You can change every relationship, every routine in something vibrant with, the, with God Almighty and you sense and you feel, oh, the future is brighter than our past. But now we have to understand if relationship is not on both sides healthy, you have anyhow a problem. But I love myself so much to say, I want to have strong relationship. That means I start first with me. And I know if I'm a giver, I will receive as well. If I give in a relationship, in a marriage, in the church, as a pastor, I open my hands like this, 
That means I am ready to receive a gift and I'm strengthened and empowered also through other relationships. Hey, in closing, the band will play a song about the first love and just take out your smartphone. Uh, we have uh, three questions or two or three questions to you because I believe there's always an action step call to action because those messages you can say, oh wow, the nuggets are good, the wisdoms are amazing, but it won't change anything unless you make some action step. You change something in terms of your relationship. When, when the band, uh, Dave actually is playing that song, just think for a moment, what could be my action step the next couple of days? love you still I'm still in love with you my Jesus but like a fire growing cold before it dies and that's what happens when I take my eyes from you and only see my side I need you here I need you here with me Love you still I'm still in love with you my Jesus but time goes by and leaves its mark on all our lives and that's what happens when I take my eyes from you and only see my side I need you here I need you here with me Take me back to the first love, to your heart that beats for me. Draw me close to where you are, cause you are my life, go ahead, Hey, take me back to the first love. What an amazing song. And I really do believe everyone, we have some relationships either in a small group or in the church or as a ministry or your family, your wives, your kids, or maybe you're single. Then even then you're not alone because you're surrounded by angels and God Almighty. And I really know in that, in the topic of relationship, that's a huge topic. It's also a topic where a lot of people have been really disappointed and hurt. Maybe even though your dream has been crashed it seems like everything is over and i want to invite the holy spirit right now because he's my closest friend he's with me in my journey i want to ask the holy spirit right now the key gives you a wisdom maybe a strategy maybe one idea who can change a relationship into something good holy spirit here we are you know my life you know my story you know everything in my life and Holy Spirit I want to ask you right now I need a word of wisdom and the Bible is so clear if we are lacking wisdom we should ask God Almighty for wisdom and through the Holy Spirit we get any idea and Holy Spirit I need a key I need one idea to unlock those relationships they are so close and nothing is impossible for you. And just close your eyes for a moment. And I really believe if we give room to the Holy Spirit, He will come. He's here anyhow. But all the time in the Bible it's clear, when the people of God gave the Holy Spirit room, He came. He empowered. He healed. came with a word in season that's why I love the Holy Spirit we never walk alone you're not alone in your relationships not one second the 
Bring me back to the first love. Bring me back to the first love. To your heart, the peace for me. Draw me close to where you are. Cause you are my life. Go have it all. Come take me back to the first love. To your heart, the beats for me. Draw me close to where you are. Cause you are my life. You are my life. You are my life. Come here, it all. In the book of relationship, Revelation is so clear. Do the first steps again. The first thing what you did in the beginning, and sometimes we're losing those things you have been so strong in the beginning, right? And don't lose the vision. Don't lose the winning part. Don't lose the surprising part. Because the Holy Spirit is really not only a help, it's the biggest inspiration in your life. Maybe along your journey, you lost the relationship with Jesus Christ or you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. Or along your journey, you lost the peace, you lost the connection with God Almighty. And I just want to invite you to a salvation prayer because the most important vibrant relationship that anyone on planet earth can have is the relationship with God because this lasts forever for an eternity wherever you are if you say Pastor Leo I've never given my life to Christ and I'm not sure if I'm dying right now if I will be saved or I lost the connection with God Almighty you only one prayer away for a strong eternity relationship with God Almighty please and pray with me Say, dear Jesus, thank you so much for my unique life. I have failed. Forgive me all my sins and failures. I make you as my Lord and Savior. Be my center. Please bless me and protect me. Please lead me and guide me. I want to be yours forever. And the Bible says, when you pray this prayer, you're born again. Your sins are forgiven. You belong to the family of God. God has written your name in the book of life. That means you belong forever. The most important relationship with God Almighty defines my eternity is the basic, the foundation in our lives. Hey, look, relationship crisis is a big, huge topic around the globe, around the world. And I'm so glad that I'm not alone. God sees, God knows, God recognizes, and we are always in the position to ask God for help. And God will never pass us by. And some people right now, you need a forgiveness miracle. You say, it's so hard for me to forgive. Because a lot of people, they, they did wrong things to you. It hurts so much. And that's why when I praise and worship Jesus Christ with my voice, with my soul, with my spirit, I lift up my voice to the God Almighty, the God all known and the God is all presence. And I say, God here, I need a blessing. I need a miracle. I need a breakthrough. I need a healing, transforming power. God can restore every single relationship. That's not a big deal for God, wherever you are. Let's sing that song, the blessing song, written by Elevation Church and some, some people just sing that song. My generations to come will be blessed in the 1,000th generation. Sing that song over your relationship.